Headache factor is how much of a pain in the butt is this really going to be? Evaluate what are those headache factors and how are they going to impact me? And if it's simple with a system built around it, can I make that headache factor go away through the system? Does this investment or does, does this business improve my lifestyle? Does it, does it improve my financial situation? Does it improve my relational situation? Does it improve my business situation? Does it improve my lifestyle in a meaningful way or doesn't it? Yeah, and let, let me, uh, let me do just a little sidebar here um, on that exact scenario. Um, I, I like investing in cryptocurrency. I like investing in blockchain technology. I like investing in things that are where the, where the world is going, maybe not where the world is. Now, these are more speculative investments. However, when I first started that process, they were not simple to me. And my evaluation of risk was it's high risk because it wasn't simple and I didn't fully understand all of the mechanics behind it. As I pursued knowledge and my knowledge went up, my, under, my simple understanding of, okay, that's what's going on here. My knowledge increased. Uh, cryptocurrency, blockchain became more simple in my mind because I began to understand it. And therefore my risk went down in my evaluation process as my knowledge went up. And so, you know, I, I think the, when I've sat on the other side of that table and been the guy that is being uh, solicited for capital, it, it kind of always boggles my mind when I'll be presented something and, and I'll, I'll give them that hard question. So what's my worst day? And when they don't just flat tell me you could lose everything and here's how you could lose it and yada, yada, yada. I sit back and I say, okay, uh, that's, that's a risk evaluation because that particular person doesn't understand what it's like to sit on this side of the table. And so risk is, uh, is one of those things. You know, I bought uh, the company FreedomSoft. And when I bought FreedomSoft, um, now this was six years ago, but when I bought it, I was, I was already known in the industry. Um, and, and this company, FreedomSoft, the brand was known in the industry. And so one of my risk evaluating uh, elements was, you know, if I buy this company that's, that's known and I'm known in the same industry and I screw it up, like I just go run this thing into the ground and I just do something stupid or whatever happens, I evaluated a, a personal, um, I guess, uh, a, a personal position in the industry risk, uh, you know, um, what, what would you call that? Like, just, I didn't want to fail in front of the industry. And so well, I evaluated yeah, that risk. Yeah. It, well, that's that, a big part of that would, I mean, financial risk for sure. If something runs in the ground or, or just market conditions don't allow you to, to make the best of it. Uh, also there's reputational risk. You were well known in the, in the industry, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, and that was, that was the word I was looking for there a second ago, reputational risk, right? Um, Cause I could, I could figure out the financial risk side of it. Okay. I could lose all my money. But the reputational risk, if I lost all my money, ran it into the ground, failed, and then the reputational risk, yeah. okay, what's my worst day there? How would I regain that and, and maintain relevance? Yes. And, uh, and at the end of the day, I evaluated that I was comfortable enough with, with the business. I was comfortable enough with my knowledge of the business. I was comfortable enough with the si simple system scale margin cash flow analysis of the business that I was willing to take the financial and reputational risk of me screwing it all up, which was a fun, uh, fun thing to be, you know, it's a fun, <laughs> fun place to be when, when you can start to evaluate investments from a lens that says, okay, it just kind of builds on itself. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, the, 
The seventh thing on my list then, uh, David, is headache factor. And, and that one's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But I also don't think that everybody does a good job of evaluating headache factor. And um, headache factor is how much of a pain in the butt is this really going to be, right? Um, passive income. Everybody wants passive income. Well, guess what? Passive income still requires somebody to manage the manager, somebody to manage the financial book, somebody to manage the tax return, somebody to manage the, like there's, there's management that still happens. And depending on how much of a limited or general partner you might be in a particular investment asset, um, there are, are different levels of, of that headache factor and management that you have to step up to and they always happen at the most inopportune times, right? right? You know, right when you are about to go on vacation, something happens and now you're driving to the airport, getting through security, sitting to board your plane, and you're dealing with something that you don't want to be dealing with. And so what I've tried to learn to do is evaluate what, what are those headache factors and how are they going to impact me and if it's simple with a system built around it, can I make that headache factor go away through the system? Can somebody else, who not how, right? Can nope. somebody else take care of that headache factor for me? So there might be the risk of headache factor, but if I can build a system around it that somebody else can deal with the headache factor as part of their job, now my, now my evaluation of the headache factor potential gets a green check, even though there are things that certainly could go wrong. Yeah, no, that's, that's very well said. You're right. I think not enough people put enough time into that headache factor. Either they, they don't see what may be there in terms of headache factor, which, as you said, there's always going to be some. But how can you, how can you set the systems and protocols to have somebody else deal with either is either automation or people involved with automation uh, to solve yep. those. So it's not on you. you no, know, that's beautiful. Yep. And, and finally is, is lifestyle. And um, that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a quote unquote lifestyle business, but what it means is does this investment or does, does this business improve my lifestyle? Does it, does it improve my financial situation? Does it improve my relational situation? Does it improve my business situation? Does it improve my lifestyle in a meaningful way or, or doesn't it? Or does it, does it keep me neutral or does it detract from my lifestyle? You know, um, and, and, and there have been opportunities that I have gotten all the way down on and the evaluation of risk, headache factor, and lifestyle, I just said, you know what? Even though I, I could see this at scale, even though I could see that there's margin, and even though I, it, it produces cash flow, the, the lifestyle component of it got the, got the red X. And I said, you know what? This isn't something that I want to pursue. And so th the reason I personally like these eight, and you know, it's, it's funny how you sometimes build principles and, um, and over the years they'll evolve. Um, I, I have my original Evernote when I originally sat down and I, and I was trying to evaluate a, an opportunity and I wrote these eight things down as I was saying, okay, what's important to me and how, how should I evaluate this? And, and that was in 2012. So nine years ago, I wrote these eight things down and they still hold as true today as, as they did that long ago. And so, um, and, I, and I haven't added or subtracted to the eight. They're the original eight. Um, I, I think about other things as well, certainly, but these are the eight that I go back to on a consistent basis. Well, that's why I wanted to have this topic discussed today, because I'm with you. Your principles, you, you may adjust them, evolve them, you may package them differently, but principles typically, to your point, uh, they hold ground for your life. They're your core values. They're the, uh, 
uh, the fundamental philosophy. They're the non-negotiables. Another yeah. word, you know, like what, what, what will I absolutely not sacrifice? And same thing, you look at these eight principles and go, what, what will these will I not sacrifice? Well, there yeah. they are right there. If, if I have to sacrifice any one of these, then I'm not doing it, right? If, it, right. if the sacrifice is too great and there's another redeeming factors that will allow me to mitigate that sacrifice, then I'm not doing it. And Boy, if more people would live their lives with principles that they evolve, build, do it with their significant other, I think people would have a lot better lives. But uh, this is, again, not things that we're brought up with. Either someone teaches this to you or you read about it or you, it evolves on your own because you're just thinking differently and you want to be live a different life than other people. And I think that's kind of what entrepreneurs are anyway, right? Uh, but 100%. The, the principles, uh, Rob, are what I was after today. And uh, I think you nailed those. I, I love those. And they've, they've stood the test of time for you. And I know because I know you that they work for you. And that's the key. I know you I know enough about your lifestyle to know that this is fit and you've worked this very, very well. So uh, congratulations to you and thank you for sharing these with us. I think our audience, no matter what they're doing, what they're investing in, business, uh, other investments, having a set of principles that they can utilize or you know modify for their own own selves. Um, this is a yep. good place to start. Absolutely. Love it. Happy to share, man. It's been it's been fun. I, I every time I come on and, and we chat. It's it's enjoyable. Um, we we talk about different things, and you know, I did a little bit more of the talking this time than some of our other uh, uh, cases. But you said, "Hey, I want you to come in and talk about these things," and man, I'm I'm happy to do it, and, and really appreciate it. Well, it, you know what? These conversations serve me just as well as it serves uh, our audience. Uh, that's why I like to do them. And I'm privileged to have these conversations. We'll do more because every, like you said, every time we do one, uh, we go a little bit deeper in something and I, I pull out some ahas. I take notes like everybody else, Rob. Uh, I'm, a, I'm always learning from, from the best and, and you're definitely one of those. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. If you enjoyed watching or learning from this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. If you have a question about any of my content or this specific video, just please leave a comment down below. And as always, stay focused on your freedom. I'll see you next time.